Welcome to our Pro-Life Story. Today I will be visiting with Lorraine Israel. Lorraine is the wife of former NFL player Steve Israel, and this is Lorraine's story. My family, the heart of our house, our foundation is the Lord. If I'm walking around with unforgiveness, that's a burden on me. Who am I not to forgive? He's my dad, and I love him no matter what. Michaela Skurlock presents A Pro-Wife Story, featuring Lorraine Israel. Well, first of all, Lorraine, thank you so much for sitting down today with me and opening up your house to us. Um, I want to start by talking a little bit about your childhood. Can you, let's talk about that. Okay. Um, I am the youngest of four. I have three older brothers and um, my parents divorced when I was around 10. And um, when my parents divorced, my dad sort of, he was, he was out of the picture. He loved me, and I know that he loved my brothers. There's a 16 year difference between myself and my youngest brother, so they're considerably way older than I, I am. Um, but at the time, you know, divorce for any child is devastating. Um, so during that time, my mother, she just, um, She's a strong woman, and she was determined that um, I wouldn't be another statistic, um, that she was determined that her daughter would be educated and just have a better life than what she had. And I just think every parent wants for their children to have a better life than what they've had. Mm -hmm. and that was also has become my desire for my own children to I know my mother and my stepfather because I she later remarried I have an awesome stepfather and they did for me the best that they could mm -hmm. and now I see that I'm trying to do the best for our children um, that we can do was it tough for you I mean I know you, you touched a little bit about uh, going through a divorce, not mm -hmm. necessarily you, but right. seeing that was your parents. And, and I know you had shared with me at some point about the relationship with your dad, even though mm -hmm. he loved you, but it was, mm -hmm. it was challenging, I think, some of the things that you had witnessed as it, a child. It was challenging. Right? Um, it was, he was never abusive to me, but he was abusive to my mother, um, and that is no secret. Um, and she tried her best to shelter me from that. Um, but when you're abused and the marks are visible, um, there's only but so much you can hide. Um, so it was, it was- Did you was witness a, that, I, that, that I, physical abuse? Yes, I, I, I did. And it's hard and I felt there were times when the roles would be reversed where I was, I would try to be the protector. And you know, and I'm just a kid. Um, Cause my dad would never, ever, ever um, abuse me. Mm -hmm. So I would try to protect my mother. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a really sad time. And you know, um, like I said, d divorce can be tough, but in this situation, I'm. I'm glad that they did divorce yeah. because I don't think it would have had a, a happy ending. Someone, something tragic would have eventually happened. Yeah. Well, you had a great, I mean, a great uh, way of looking at it. And it seems like you moved on. So your mom got remarried and you moved on to, you, to college, right? Mm -hmm. And where did you go to college? I went to the University of Pittsburgh. And is that where you and Steve met? That's where I met the love of my life. Yeah. Um, we're college sweethearts and um, he's, he's everything. That's where, that's where we met and fell in love. And he likes to tell everyone that I'm his first girlfriend. 
I laugh at that all the time. But that's good. Yeah, that's that, very that's good. good. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Good, 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 good for him. So first brownie <laughs> points right there. He yes, waited for the right yeah, one. Yes, absolutely. So you guys fell in love in fell college, in love. and then did you guys get married in college or? No, we got married a um, couple years after uh, Steve was drafted. Um, he got drafted from Pitt straight to the Los Angeles Rams. Um, so it was 1994 um, when we got married. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I am very so excited it's... to hear more about that. We have to take a little break and okay. we'll be right back with Lorraine Israel, so stay tuned. More with Michaela and Lorraine Israel when a pro wife story returns. A pro wife story continues with Michaela and Lorraine Israel. Before the break, we talked about Steve and you getting married. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk a little bit about that transition into the NFL. I mean, because you guys met in college, mm -hmm. and now you're in the NFL. Mm -hmm. There's lots of pressure for him, mm -hmm. and then now you guys are married. Tell me a little bit about that transition. What was that like? It, it was, it was, a life that I could never have even imagined or prepared for. I wasn't the type of girl that dreamt, oh, one day I'm going to have a husband and four kids and this whole dream and fantasy. But um, I c just cannot say enough that God, I have to say God, Michaela. I want you to. Absolutely. I believe that too. You know that. That was, I followed the path. He took me on this, this journey and this path and it led me straight to Steve and it led us straight to the NFL. And what, it, it was just a blessing. It's a, it's a life that no one can even imagine. You know. <laughs> well, did you feel there were any pressures that, you know, pressure that you may have put on yourself or that others may have put on you? I think there's always that pressure that, um, you know, everything always is just so. Everything is just always perfect and um, put together and the pressure to look good, for the kids to be perfect, for the house to be perfect. And not pressure from my husband. This is pressure from the world. They think they have these, um, just these ideas of what they think our life is like. And it's really more normal than what they, they think. It's great. We're not, I'm not saying that it wasn't a great life, but it's, it's normal. Yeah. It's normal. So you had a bad hair day, like everybody else, right? Girl. <laughs> bad hair days, um, you know, kids cutting up in the grocery store. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, we have, we have those days just like everyone else. Right. Now, I want to know a little bit, you had, I'm going to call it a, a little bit of a challenging relationship with your real dad growing mm -hmm. up, obviously, mm -hmm. with what you had witnessed. Mm -hmm. um, did that at all affect your relationship with Steve? Um, I think that, I'm, I'm sure that it did, and it has probably taken me many years to really come full circle with that. Um, because I was young and immature, um, you know, I think there was times when I probably leaned on Steve probably more than what I should have and had really high expectations for him that I shouldn't have. But um, because he is the type of man that he is, he has always just embraced me with all my flaws all my, if it was something negative that I said or something nice, he just, if anyone who knows my husband, they just know that he is an encourager and he would build you up. And so, again, I have to say, God had Steve just for me. Mm -hmm. 
because he, he knows how to deal with Lorraine. And I think that's so amazing because a father figure is so important. I mean, a father figure is the most important male figure, especially when we grow up, mm -hmm. until we get married, if we get married, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I would think, I'm curious, since you had that unique relationship with your real dad, um, I would think that when now all of a sudden you have someone like Steve who loves you, like you said, unconditionally, who loves you, just the way you are, I would think you always would be a little bit of suspicious. I mean, I know I would. I would feel like, like why, you know, why do I deserve it? Did you ever have any of these thoughts? I don't know. I just, I, I just feel like, as far as my dad goes, because he, he did divorce my mom, I know that he still loved me. Mm -hmm. And I think that part of his, well, I know, the part of his problem was he did not know how to really be a father, and um, that made it that made our relationship difficult. But you know, as I matured mm -hmm. and um, my father, he was older, um, our relationship did strengthen and become better. And we were able to have a relationship, maybe not the daughter-daddy relationship that I had always desired as a little girl, but at least I can say as an adult, mm -hmm. we were able to have a relationship. And um, I'm thankful mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've forgiven him um, for any hurt or broken promises and so when we talk about Steve am I suspicious or anything that has never really been a concern of mine so so maybe appreciative and you loving him back is the right word right? I am so appreciative of him and um, even more appreciative of the way he is a father to our children because mm -hmm. he is everything that I didn't have as a father. So my children are so blessed to have a dad like Steve. More with Michaela and Lorraine Israel when a pro-wife story returns. A pro-wife story continues with Michaela and Lorraine Israel. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about you uh, forgiving. Just, I find it tremendous. You are such a loving person. And for me to know you personally and then know this about you and your story, that how you've been able to forgive your dad and you love your dad. And, and I know for a fact that when your dad you got sick. Tell us a little bit about that because I think it's an amazing part of your story. Yeah. Um, my dad um, had he had cancer, and he was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, and he tried to keep that from us, from his children, because he he um, in his later years he he was not married. Um, so he didn't have anyone. So I took on full responsibility for his care and doctors and, and it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was hard because you're forced to, to have to make decisions for someone who is dying. You're not right there with them and you feel like you're holding someone's life in your hands. and. I could not hold on to anything that my dad ever did or said that I didn't like um, because I, I gotta keep saying God, Michaela, because he has forgiven us. So how can I walk around and not forgive my dad? Um, he's my dad and I love him no matter what. And you did all this 
even though he was abusive to your mom as of a course. child, because yes. like you said, you forgave him, yes. you did the right thing. Two, yes. two wrongs don't make a right, right? I mean, you did the right thing. And you were doing all this while Steve is playing in the NFL? No, no. This was going on after he retired? Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my father died, it was like two, three years ago now. Um, time just is getting away from me. It hasn't been that long. Um, but I was having to travel, okay. and so while I was gone, Steve was having to maintain the kids here, and, um, you talk about someone being supportive, mm -hmm. and he would just say, Ray, go, mm -hmm. or he'd make it possible for me to go and get there, and, That's great. Um, I mean, that, you know, that just speaks a lot for him and for you. And I mean, I'm just amazed and I wanted to touch on it because of that reason, because you are the poster child of just forgiveness. And, uh, and, and but I think when you forgive someone, it not only is a blessing to them, but a blessing to you too, correct? I mean, it, that's how you go on. Absolutely. If, if, if I'm walking around with unforgiveness, that's a burden on me. Why, why would I do that to myself? And, you know, for me, not for everyone, but for me, forgiveness may have taken a, a little while, but I can say, like, I'm free. Mm -hmm. I walk in unforgiveness mm -hmm. towards my dad. You know, he, he, he didn't know. Mm -hmm. There's just some things he couldn't. Um, so I'm not holding him responsible mm -hmm. for that. It's, mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, you have four children. I do. I know this. And um, I want to touch a little bit on your third because I know he was born while Steve was playing, correct? Yes. And he was born prematurely, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, I bet that was scary. It was very scary. I went to the doctors for just a regular monthly checkup. Thought I was going to spend the rest of the day shopping and going to lunch. Well, that doctor's appointment ended up with me going um, actually straight across the street to Brigham and Women's mm -hmm. um, where they told me I would spend the duration of my pregnancy. And that day that they told me that I was like 25 weeks pregnant mm -hmm. and it was football season. Mm -hmm. Now you know. I know. We have two kids at home and they were little. We were living in a city where we didn't have any family, and it's football season. Football season is not going to stop because Larray Israel is in the hospital about to give birth to a premature baby. So that was hard because this was the first time I've ever had to um, call Steve at work because mm -hmm. um, as football wise we just handle it and we right. we know what to do and we just take care of it right. i was gonna say uh, for those you know watching this show i mean we don't call our husbands <laughs> for anything no i mean you no. better be no like have lost a foot yes. or something right i yes. mean right so but this was obviously a reason to call yes. him and i'm sure he knows or he knew that oh. when he got that call that there was a yes. reason for that yeah. that it was an emergency yeah. and Steve was there. I don't know how he got from Foxborough to, into Boston so quickly, yeah. um, but he did. And that's where they told me I would be flat as a pancake. That, that's their terminology that they use for the duration of the pregnancy. And I was doing that math in my head. I'm like, I, I can't, I can't do this. This. Who's going, who's going to take care of my husband? Who's going to take care of my kids? But um, once we got our support team in, our, our parents, these mom, my mom, um, brothers, sisters, everyone it was like all hands on deck. Every day after practice, Steve was at the hospital with me. Um, we sort of just moved into that hospital room. He did not miss a day. Um, 
yeah, he's that was pretty amazing. It, it probably brought our relationship, I'm sure, even um, closer because we knew that we were having a son. We had two girls, um, and we were still fairly right. young in our marriage, and so. It's a special time. This, this was a special time. More with Michaela and Loray Israel when a pro-wife story returns. A pro-wife story continues with Michaela and Loray Israel. So Steve is in the middle of the football season. You are in the middle of a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You're just being told that you have to most likely give birth early. Mm -hmm. And so the baby, Austin, mm -hmm. he was born. How premature was he? He was born three months early. Wow. Um, and I knew that something wasn't quite right. And they did an exam and they found out that I needed to deliver like right now. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, well, can we just wait for Steve to get here? Hmm. You know, we want. Was he at a game there. or just practice? He's at practice. practice. Okay. And they said, Mrs. Israel, we need to have the baby out before Steve even gets to the car. So, of course, the floodgates open, and I'm crying and emotional. And, um, you know, long story short, Austin is born and. Austin was born actually lifeless. They had to resuscitate him and work on him. Um, it's probably good that you were under, I would think, as a mother. Absolutely. As yeah. a mother, I have no memory yeah. of that birth. Mm -hmm. I have no knowledge whatsoever of the chaos that was going on in that room. Mm -hmm. Michaela, I feel I was spared mm -hmm. as a mom. Yeah from having to see that. Because as mothers, yeah. you know, and that, you know, a birth is supposed to be a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, and if you give birth to a lifeless baby, mm -hmm. that memory would be with me yeah. for the rest of my life. I have no memory of that. Mm -hmm. My first memory of seeing Austin, um, he was breathing, he was very small, he was born two pounds, 10 ounces. Um, he was in a little incubator. He was tiny. And I mean, and, and I know he survived, he, mm -hmm. he made it. Mm -hmm. And then the question I have for you, because I know for a fact that when, um, because he was your third. Mm -hmm. So we do know you have a fourth child. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I wanna talk about that because it's interesting when you went through something so dramatic with your third, I want to fast forward a little bit because I, I know even though this is a very serious topic, you already know where I'm going with yes, this I because do. you're absolutely <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Yes. But Steve retired after yes. playing how many years? Ten. Ten years. Mm -hmm. And obviously when the guys retire, and every wife I've spoken to thus far, you know, they, you know, some guys already have a career they are jumping right into. But some guys find projects, you know, we had one I just spoke with and they renovated a house and he did some wild things around the house. And, but Steve. I was Steve's project. <laughs> and, I mean, and what, that, let's so, go there a little bit. Tell me why. So Steve retired. We have kids. I have my routine, my life, my schedule. His life wasn't as structured now after right after retirement mm -hmm. like mine. And um, yeah, we had a baby. <laughs> and Aspen was not planned. So So he had so much time on his hands. Yes. <laughs> that you Surprise. guys Surprise, I'm still trying to figure out how Aspen got here. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And she's how old now? She's twelve. Twelve. Uh-huh. Yes. So she <laughs> was conceived. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. and after yeah. he retired. Uh -huh. Yes. Thank you, NFL, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, she's awesome. We're happy that she's here. Aspen was not planned. 
but so she wasn't planned. That's a good point because I would think that subconsciously, you know, after going through through something so Absolutely. traumatic, you would be frightened to have another child. Yes. Um, I didn't know how this pregnancy was yeah. going to go. Um, so here I am in a, in a totally different city. My doctors aren't here. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a little scary at first. Um, did have a little bit of complications, but nothing like Austin. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to have, you know, the necessary doctors and things set in place far in advance um, so that we wouldn't have a baby born at 28 weeks. And that's awesome. a great message, I think, to those, you know, who may have a fear of getting pregnant again because you are a prime oh, example yes. that you can get pregnant Actually, again yes. with no complications, right? Yes. So yeah. just because you have one premature birth does not mean that you're always going to have a premature birth. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, I've ha I had the best medical doctors and team and they knew my mm -hmm. history. They knew everything about mm -hmm. everything leading up to Austin's birth and that just made them, just made it possible yeah for all the right things to be in place for Aspen's birth. Yeah, and we have to take another little break, but when we come back, I do want to talk about uh, how all of these ups and downs with your pregnancies led to you being a spokesperson for uh, a very special organization. More with Michaela and Lorraine Israel when a pro-wife story returns. A pro-wife story continues with Michaela and Lorraine Israel. Before the break, we talked about you being uh, the spokesperson for a very special organization. Which one is that? The March of Dimes. Um, the March of Dimes is very dear to Steve and I, and we choose to support that organization because they deal with babies, and I just think that Steve and I both have a heart for children. And being that we have a child that was born prematurely, and we know what these babies need, what these families need, and there's really no other organization that Steve and I would want to support more than the March of Dimes. And just recently, you had, were given an opportunity mm -hmm. to speak at a rather large event that yes. the March of Times yes. put together, right? Are you, does that come easy to you, speaking no. in front of large crowds? No, no. And Steve and I, we joke about this. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I was set up <laughs> because he came to me and he said, Ray, we're going no, I, I really think that you should, you know, tell our story at the March of Dimes conference. Um, he said Florida. we or you? He said we. 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 That's the setup. Yeah, that was a setup. Mm -hmm. So I was a little apprehensive because, Michaela, I'm totally okay being the person in the background. I'm very supportive of my husband in everything that he wants to do, whether it's his football career, his professional career now, his speaking engagements, I am his biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. I'll do everything that I can to help him, to help him use his platform. I encourage him. I'm the person behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So you so, thought? So I thought. So again, I told, I told you earlier how Steve is an encourager. So he encouraged me to speak with him at the March of Dimes conference. So we go to Florida together. We're introduced together. 
We're on stage together. It's, this is good. I'm thinking we're going to tag team each other. You know, we're going to share our testimony about the birth of Austin and speak in front of doctors and researchers and this, you know, all these people. Well, I'm on stage. Next thing I know, Steve does his little his little thing. He says hi and everything. Then he leaves me on stage <laughs> by myself. I'm like, no, come back. <laughs> like, I could not believe. Like, here I am on stage in front of all these people by myself. And, of course, the crowd, they thought it was funny because I definitely said, okay, my husband just set me up. And I told my story, and I was amazed with how afterwards people, afterwards they wanted to know more. People were crying, and they were saying how I touched them, or they had a similar story. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not used to that, because after every speaking engagement that I'm ever at, people are coming up to Steve. I mean, mm -hmm. pictures and autographs well this time it was about my me and our it was our story mm -hmm. but it was told by me um so it was the table had turned a little bit and it was different um but i did it i want to touch on that because i want the people watching this show to know because you have just touched on something very important by saying you did it. You did it even though you wasn't comfortable, right? It wasn't necessarily something you would have signed up for, right? Although you asked me to come here today, right? Mm-mm. <laughs> right? <That's, laughs> no. So that's no. what I'm getting with this. No. You know, telling our story is not always easy, right? It's not. Right. And, and, but there's so much that people can learn from that. And I want that message to really get through to the people watching this show because I think it's a lot of people with stories just like you. And um, you are such an encouragement to me, and I know you're gonna be an encouragement to many watching. You know, I would just encourage, and everyone has a story, mm -hmm. and everyone has a testimony. Everyone's story is different. When we hold on to our story, we're not really able to help anyone else because we're holding it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how my story today will affect someone. I know when I spoke at the March of Dimes conference, immediately I saw how my story had touched someone um, and just the relationships and the connections that were made just from that one speaking engagement. So I would just say I'm not going to allow myself to walk in fear mm. because when you walk in fear you allow the devil to have control and that's not the way I live um, you know God says that we shouldn't have a spirit of fear mm. and again fear would be another burden mm -hmm. so um, we, we, and we have to use our platform. Mm -hmm. And the March of Dimes had given me a platform and had given me um, the opportunity to tell my story. More with Michaela and Lorraine Israel when a pro-wife story returns. A pro-wife story continues with Michaela and Lorraine Israel. Before we went to break, you so eloquently shared with us why we all should tell our stories. And I know even for myself, even as much as I've asked you to share your story, it's sometimes difficult to step out and do something because we, we do have insecurities, right? I mean, I know I do. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, did you have insecurities do you think was that the reason why it was difficult for you to agree to maybe sharing whether it's with me or you know in front of a large group 
I'm curious what was going through your mind that was keeping you from saying, I'll do it, I'll do it. Well, for me, it's not the fact that I have insecurities. I'm sure that I do, although I, I think that I'm a very secure person. I think that I've always thought that what I had to say or my story wasn't important enough. When you're married to an NFL player, it's always about them. Like, no one cares about the wife or the kids, or it's always about the player. And that, had, that has been our life. So um, even though I have a story, even though I have a testimony, even though I have knowledge on so many different things, I always felt like it wasn't what people wanted to hear because it's always about the player. And that's a lie, you know, that's a lie because your story is so compelling and it's so real that I'm so glad you're sharing them. Whether it's the story about you, how to forgive someone who was abusive in front of you and how to love, whether it's the story of um, speaking even when you don't feel like speaking or being in the limelight when you don't feel like being in the limelight. So uh, I know now that Steve is pretty much settled in his new career, uh, which he is a he, financial advisor, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But you also work. Yes. So you've taken all those gifts that you have and what is it that you do now? I am now an assistant teacher. Go figures. Because I mean, well, you are like perfect for that. Well, I don't know because I always told Steve I would never work with anyone's children. I, kids are not my thing. Never say never. Mm. Um, because I'm working with 10 year olds, fifth graders, and I love my job. Um, and from uh, my job is very rewarding and almost the whole time that my kids were growing up I've been a stay-at-home mom and that's the best job and I'm so grateful um, that Steve was able to make that possible for me he that is the best gift that he could have ever given me was to to make it possible for me to stay home and raise our children. Um, so I never worked outside of the home. Wow. So re really, this is my first mm -hmm. real big girl job, if you want to say. Um, and I love it. And with this job comes um, just some satisfaction. Because um, you're like an extended mom to, I believe that a teacher is a parent away. It, it's not just someone who babysits and teaches your child, but I think a really good teacher, someone who's really called to do it, I believe they are like a second parent because they speak into your child's life on a daily basis. And I know you see kids that go through all kinds of things at home. Yes. And we talked about this the other yes. day, you, I think you have yes. a student that, uh, uh, that may have a difficult time at home or yes. that may, you know, whatever it may be. Yes. But you were there for them on a yes. daily basis. Yes. We see it all. Yeah. And I love these kids. Yeah. And it's so very easy to become attached. You know, if you think about it, I'm with these kids more than their parents are with them. Um, so it's very rewarding. And it is a ministry. Mm -hmm. Of course. It is a ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, again, I, I, I was blessed with the perfect job mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Because not only am I working now, but I'm at the same school with my kids. Mm -hmm. 
Like we go mm -hmm. to school together. I see them throughout the day. We come home together. So, I mean, it's a, there's no other way to say it than it's a great you gig. You love what you do. It's a great gig. You love what you do. Love what and that's I do. great. And kudos to all the teachers out there, not just you, but every single teacher, because we don't say it often enough that teaching is not easy. And I personally think to all the teachers that are out there. Hey, Kayla, I have so. a totally new respect mm -hmm. for teachers because I too was once that parent that dropped off and right. picked up. And parents do not have a clue with mm -hmm. what teachers go through in a day. We, wow. yeah, it's, it is really, I say it all the time, you cannot make up some of this stuff. It's, it is beyond. And some of these kids come to school just needing love. Yeah. And I know my team, the teachers that I work with, my co-workers, they love on these children mm -hmm. every day. Well, thank you for doing it. I, I, I really want to tell you, thank you for doing it, um, especially it's probably an eye-opener to a lot of people who don't know necessarily that a professional athlete's wife does have a career outside of just being a wife, which is a career in itself, and we know that, but you do other things as well, and I want to thank you for that. We we got about a minute left, and I want to give you that time to share with us what it is the most important thing that you want to leave the viewers with. I think the most important thing that I would want to leave the viewers with as far as just being a, a wife and a mother and someone who has a career, for my family, for me, the heart of our house and everything that we do, our foundation, and Kelly, you know what I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Everything we do um, for our children, at work, it is because the Lord has made it possible and we just built everything on His word and that is our family's foundation. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for opening up your house and letting us come in. I appreciate it. Thank you. I know you didn't want to do it, <laughs> but I'm glad you did. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. been watching a pro white story presented by Michaela Skurlock and the Carolina Panthers